Welcome to Sports Central. We're still at Sports City this week for the concluding part of the World Squash Championships. We're going to find out who gets the title in the men, as well as looking at the event's legacy. But before we do all that, let's just recap on last week's show, which saw England's Vicky Botwright get to the final against Malaysia's Nicole David. What was once hard to imagine is now a scene of delight. The squash world is a prestigious one which continues to thrive. Squash is now played in over 150 countries around the world. Match ball. Sorry. Okay, call of time. He wasn't quite ready. Match ball. So Vicky now attacking, playing with drops. Sorry, no. Call asking. Oh, he's giving stroke. Harsh way to end the match. David. Very hard. David wins by three games to one. 5 11, 11-1, 11-6, 11-9. I just went in there hoping for the best, and uh, and Vicky just came on strong with the crowd cheering her on, being at home ground. Yeah, you know, it's, that's how it feels like um, when I play in Malaysia, when the home crowd get, is there, they just cheer you on and you get that extra energy. But I knew I had to do something more and I, I managed to pull it through. Yeah, it's been fabulous this week. I, I don't think I could have um, written it myself, you know, better. Apart from winning, that would have been nice. I play the Nationals and I don't. it's known and it's almost like a bit of a running joke that I don't actually do that well. Um, so when I started to kind of produce the goods, so to speak, everyone was kind of quite pleased because it's been a long time coming. The Squash World Championships was the last professional game for Vicky. Retiring, she enters a new role as head squash coach in Manchester. Now I caught up with her to talk about how the championships has impacted the future of the sport in the region. Well, all this week we had um, a number of different schools coming in um, to watch squash. We did some sessions on court. Um, you know, so they've been around, they've experienced like top top world squash. They got goodie bags and t-shirts and, and we got the kids to cheer for the players on court and if you were green you chose this player, if you were in orange you, you cheered for this player and so it was it was actually quite good fun. We we had about eight coaches um, that came in and, 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 and looked after that for us. It's fantastic to involve the kids in an event like this so they can look up to the role models. That's right, yeah, and you can see what that maybe they could achieve if they if they're willing to work hard and if they like playing squash they can then get involved from um, just a simple skills programme and then they can do an after skills programme or li little belters programmes which is what we run and then they can get involved in the academies if they progress even further. So, so could you just tell us about the programmes that are coming out of this event? Um, we went into like local primary schools and um, they we delivered like a five week programme which ended um, with a mini tournament and then the winners of that mini tournament then got the VIP tickets to come here and we're also going to continue with the legacy and more schools will we'll go into more schools and we'll run, we'll run other events and we use the mini squash wall which we take into sports halls and so yeah we're going to continue with the legacy of the world open. So we've got some great yeah. development pathways for the children, what about the adults? Well we have a number of um, things that are going on for the adults, we have a community night on um, a Tuesday night which is open to anyone who wants to come, beginners intermediates you know or even advanced, we have all the courts here so it's just kind of come down whenever you want between like three hours really from like six till nine um, and then we have a number of racquetball programs running Monday, Thursday and Fridays um, our successful one out of that is the Friday one um, we have a lot of members that come from the gyms down into into the courts um, the, the Monday and the Thursday ones are targeted maybe at the mums that drop the kids off so they can play racquetball on the other side of the sports city and know that, that, you know, that the kids are in a safe environment and they're kind of doing some activity as well. And we've also just started up 
um, a new program on a Friday night at 6 or 7. Um, it's actually at one of Manchester City Council's um, venues in the sports hall, Denmark Road, um, where we, we run a, a programme for women only there. So it's, it's actually in the sports hall, so it's kind of you know, a, little, a little bit of exercise and some racket skills as well, which we do against the wall. So you've been in this role, well, you've been doing this role for some months now, it sounds yeah. like you're very busy. Yeah, it's um, it's a really good role, and it was when I when I first took the job, it, a lot of it was already you know set up. And one of the things I wanted to improve on was actually the the girls and women into squash or racquetball, and um, because that's where we're struggling a little bit. So the future for squash in Manchester looks very bright. Yes, yeah. I mean, the last few years it's been fantastic. We've so many kids have come through the program, and you know, if if they don't like it, they can go and do other things. But we, you know, our programs, our academies are, are all busy every single you know session that we do. So if Montel's watching and wants to come down, what should they do? If they want to come down, they can come down on a, a Monday or a Thursday night, four till six and they can join in, they'll get given rackets, balls and everything that they actually need. We pick up the men's final in game one. Your commentators are Chris Robinson and Alan Thatcher. Well, it's an all-Egyptian final, but it's not the pair of Egyptians we expected, Chris, with Anna Shabana, the reigning champion and world number one, being beaten by young Rami Ashur there in the red shirt. Kareem Darwish beating another former world champion, David Palmer, in his semi-final. Two former world junior champions here on court. Yeah, I mean, that's a, a great added interest, isn't it? The winner of that will, the winner of this, sorry, will join Danish Khan as the only person able to win both junior and senior world champs. And that's, I think, a fantastic achievement for any player. Yes, lad. One love. Yeah, ball, uh, quizzical yet. look yes, from Ram here, sure. 6 2. Exactly where you would want a coach to be able to tell your player to get to. Get to 6 first. Halfway mark. Yes, lad. 6 2. Ram here, sure. Gets the let here. Sort of gets through, and uh, oh, soft Darwish net. wasn't too happy about that. Yeah, it's a little bit soft, but I think it's the type of decision a referee gives early on that. He gives too many of them. He has a little warning with the player. He tells him to play the next one. <laughs> this time no it's Darwish's left. turn. Hand out. And Darwish gets a no let. Three six. He was no, heading he towards the, the front way. wall, and then Chris suddenly turned right, around no and tried to get towards the back wall. Three six. And found Rami Ashore in his way. Well, I mean, when you consider the other one was a was a let, you could have played a little let there as well, I suppose. That ball dying in the back left corner. Four six. And just seen here from Remy, just trying to pick the pace up a little bit, Alan. He's trying to get on the volley a little bit more. The tempo seems as if Kareem is dictating it at the moment. Well, Darvish, that's two cross-court drops two. we've seen from Darvish. He's out playing Rami with his favourite shot. Hand out, 7-4. Yeah, he is at the moment. and I'm not sure that will continue for the whole match. <laughs> but yeah, he's taken his chances and he's deserved his, his lead. He will, in my opinion, he will need the first game. Can't see him trailing and coming back and winning. Down. Just because of the, the comments Eight, before about Rami's record and and his success and, and Kareem's lack of success in major finals. Well, that was a rather casual shot from Rami Ashour, that boast before hitting the side wall and then clipping the top of the tin, gifting a point to Darwish. The other thing you get, Alan, a lot of times is when a number seven seed... the wrong way. A beautiful shot. Number seven seed reaches the final. Sometimes that is their final. They're just happy to Nine be four. there. And it's a fantastic achievement in itself. Rami, I just can't see him being happy losing in the World Open final. Well, Darwish would be happy sending him the wrong way with that shot. Yeah, he's, he's got him rattled. 9-4, he's doubled the, the points. He's got him scraping at the front as if he's a chicken in a pen. Oh, we've read that. 
Loose volley from Darwish. 9 4. Ashaw gets the let. Maybe you get a slow mo replay. Side, Referees don't get this. You and I do. A little bump on the way yeah. through. Enough to put somebody off their balance, obviously. You want to be set on the ball. No harm done. Kareem's lobs. Noticeably not as good as Rami. Doesn't get under the ball quite as well. Oh, volley into the tin from Darwish. Panda. He just Five choked nine. on that shot. Would have been game ball. He's let Rami Ashore back in the game. Down. But that's in the tin. The ball just sat up at the front. Panda. Comes through. Ten five, yeah, you're right. Ball. It didn't set right through to him, and by the time he played it, the ball was a little bit lower than he wanted. Just handing back the initiative so quickly. He's handed him game ball. Hisham will have a few words to Rami after this, I think. Rami's good brother. A stroke to Darwish. Darwish gets Darwish. a penalty 11, stroke 11, to take the opening down. game. That's all for part one, but join me after the break as we'll get to see who is the 2008 men's world squash champion. Will it be Rami Asher of Egypt or even Kamir Dawish of Egypt? See you then. Welcome back. We're at Sports City in the centre of the 200 metre athletics track, looking a little bit different as we're here for the squash world championships. And we're going to get back to the men's final. Very yeah. close in the second game. Rami Ashur putting that backhand drop into the tin. Scores level at 5 all. He's had to battle, hasn't he, Alan Rami? He's really had to battle this last little phase because Karim has asked lots of questions. Taking the first game, obviously, and we've got a lead in the start of the second, and Rami has to played a little bit ugly. Handout. But you've got to do that Six sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's all a little bit tense on there now because well, penalty stroke there to Rami Ashur. Yeah, he doesn't ask for many, but it's just and he making puts that one in the tin again. And these are basic Six. shots. Oh. They are, yeah, they are for him certainly. I mean, he normally knocks them in like you and I would maybe knock a drive to the back of the court. But well, you might. Well, I, 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 I did actually think that, but I thought I might say different. <laughs> but yes, you expect great things in a World Open final. And it's the mistakes that surprise you for a match of this importance. Well, yes and no, really, because, of, because the match is so big, it's difficult for the quality to be outstanding. I do think Kareem is playing... Some excellent squash, certainly for his level as well, because he clearly is just a little bit behind Rami in terms of ranking results, titles. Well, there we saw a beautiful touch from Rami Ashur. Hand out. It's a good length, isn't Hand it? Hand out, 7 6. Nice hold again and a beautiful length, second time round, and then variety. Great little place to the front. Still wanting to take the ball in short. Oh, Kareem. Nice beautiful touch. Yes, no left. Oh. No way. Guys, what are you doing? Don't you? He was yeah. a long way the from the ball the there, Chris. Well, he's just saying you guys are joking. That's the best shot I've played. And he's right. That is just a no let. Well, it was six bounces before he well, got through. It's a big no let. Mm. It's not even a little no let. Early volleys on both sides. But also how quick he gets out of the shot and back to the central area. Skipping around the court effortlessly. Squeezing the lines left and right. Wit's been good as well. Kareem to his credit. He's hanging in though, Ali. He's not doing anything silly at this particular stage. Ah. Loose. And there he squeezes it. Seven, eight. See, Rami Ashur could have asked for a let there, opted to play it slightly off balance, gave away a simple penalty stroke. 
Yeah, but his philosophy is to play the ball. Absolutely. And that is such a great thing to see. Nobody wants to see matches full of lets. Made himself quite big there, Kareem across the middle. And again, the length battle starts up. Good volley in early from Rami on the back end side, nice and straight. Good structure from both players at the moment. Good big rally. Oh, and there's the talent. Just can't resist it sometimes. And again, beautiful angle on the yeah. forehand the and squeezes it. Ball out. And there's passion. He knows this is a big phase. Well, let's see that again. Is that slice cross court volley? Hand out. Well, the first seven. one was a nick, and the second one was just the angle. Look at that. And it goes. And then that squeezed the error. That was a good rally from both players. That's got to be a stroke. <laughs> right there. Stroke two, Darius. <laughs> Hand out. Eight, nine. I think Rami's frustrated because he just knows Karim is just working him so well straight. He stuck that drop shot halfway up the front wall, Chris. So, uh, wow, well, there's no yeah. complaints there, no. Fairly simple. I think it was probably the question he was asking was probably about his own shot. Yeah, his, the, uh, yeah his count, his counter uh, drop wasn't so good. But look at that backhand. I haven't seen a lot of it in the semi-final and in the final. Not as much as previous Hander, matches we've eight, commentated on, but ball. it's still his favourite shot. Ramia Shaw sliding in the cross-court winner. There's the game ball. And he's earned it the hard way. Kareem can still be positive here, Alan, and lose this game because he's played well. He's asked good questions. Yes, lad. 10-8, game ball. Rack it up nice and early, showing he was ready to play the ball. I'm not sure it gets the let. And that's another good lesson for juniors. If you want to get a let from the referee, you better show that you can actually hit the ball. Down. That's in the 10 11, from eight, Kareem Darwish. So Rami Ashur has fought back. It's one game all. Rami Ashur. Exquisite touch. Great reach. That's so to Darwish. To Darwish. And out. 5-9. So let's see if Darwish is able to make one final push to stop this trophy getting in the hands of the young Rami Ashur. Well, everyone was saying that the winner of the Rami Amir semi-final will be the champion. I think they're going to be right. Oh, it's a fantastic drop shot. Cool. Very tight backhand. 10-5, match ball. Everyone in the crowd has really appreciated this final. It's had some good contrast. Rami's collecting his thoughts, which is an excellent idea. 60 minutes on the clock. Rami Ashur serving the World Open Championship. And there it is. He buries that loose ball in the front right now. He hugs his Egyptian teammate. His good friend, Kareem Darwish. And they're a private moment in the middle of the court, surrounded by more than 2,000 fans here in Manchester. Rami Ashour is the world champion. Big hug from his big brother Hisham. So the title goes to Rami Ashur. Well, the tournament was uh, was really nice. Everything was uh, really well organized. I really wanted to win the, the title, but uh, one of us had to had to win, and it was his uh, his turn. So uh, I'm really glad to to be the second. We know each other's game very well. Uh, we we always train together like every day in Cairo. So um, I tried to to keep the ball tight as much as I can and. It worked uh, the first game until the half of the second. Then my ball was uh, was a bit uh, too short, so he got the control and uh, he won. He's a gifted player. He's a player. He he goes for every shot. He he attacking. He's attacking from everywhere on court. So uh, he's such a great player. Manchester 2008 champion representing Egypt, Rami Ashour. 
do think about the, this name, the world champion, for a lot of time now, and um, thr throughout the whole match, I've been thinking about this, and it's, I mean, it's very hard to control yourself on such a big day. But um, I've been trying to contain myself since since the beginning of the day. I didn't get except like two hours sleep yesterday. There's something about the atmosphere is just you know capitalizes you. You know, you just come here, just feel that you're in a very squashy atmosphere. Everyone loves the game. Everyone knows a lot about the game. So. Um, it's just it's just great to be around. I mean, the, even the organizing here, I mean, the setup, everything as you saw today, it's just great. It's brilliant. I mean, you enjoy playing here, and especially on, on, on with with such a knowledgeable crowd and playing in front of such a knowledgeable crowd, it's, it's it's very it's very enjoyable. So Darwish is one of the is one of the best, most talented players in the world. He's number six in the world. It's never easy to win, and we always had battles together. So uh, today was one of these battles, and I think it was one of the hardest times I've ever played him in my life, because we were both desperate to win and. Um, we were actually um, we were actually kind of silent on court. I mean, most of the time we used to talk to each other in court or tease each other or do anything like this. But today we didn't. We were, I can feel like the negative energy were going around the court. So, uh, so uh, well, I just had to. I just had to change this into a positive energy inside myself. I just had to keep my composure all the time. And um, I'm really glad that I managed to uh, to beat him in four because I mean it's never easy to beat Darush in four. Uh, but um, I mean uh, again he's my big brother and um, I, I take a lot of advices from him and I, uh, I grew up you know watching him and today I'm playing with him and uh, in, the, in the final of the World Open so uh, I mean it just feels great. And I just uh, I hope I can just keep this consistency for a long time and keep my composure as long as I can. In the media have been calling us 24/7 uh, since we we both got in the uh, semis. Um, besides that yesterday I played a very very tough match with Amr Shabana the world number one, uh, who's impossible to beat, I don't know how, did they, how they even did this, but um, I mean, uh, I, had, I, had, I had a quite good game plan against him and uh, I think it worked well, um, besides that, uh, from the second we all went to the quarters, everyone in Egypt has been calling us, everyone has been chasing us, and uh, I mean, I'm, I'm really enjoying this, I'm seriously, it's going to be something huge for both of us to be in the finals when we get back to Cairo. We're at the end of the Manchester World Sports 08 journey and also Sports Central this week. Before we go, let's recap on the event and the year as a whole. What you do when you start organising events like this is two years of planning and then um, you don't really know what it looks like before you build it. So you build it, you create the stage. And at the end of the day, it's about the athletes. And if the athletes, you know, turn up, enjoy and perform, then it makes for a, for a great event and they really have performed well. So it's been a good week. We try to have uh, consistency across uh, the six world events. So the world swimming at the, uh, the Manchester Evening News Arena, the presentation uh, was phenomenal. Um, it's actually the same company. Um, so we tried to get consistency and also raise the standard. Um, obviously we had IOC delegates here as well. And one of the, the factors that they look at is the presentation of the, of the game. And so we, we, uh, we have concentrated on that quite a lot. In terms of global exposure, um, world profile, um, putting Manchester on the map as a true sports city, we always say sports city. But I think economically, it'll stack up, you know, people will say how much has been invested, the economics about the hotels and the, the, the bars and the cafes and people visiting Manchester and all the other attractions, but also the social side, you know, we've enhanced our programme with, you know, thousands of youngsters playing squash, thousands of swimming, cycling, so massive benefits for the city.